Welcome back, youth. Um, you ready to start another study? Okay, we're going to be in John this week and next week and the weeks after following. Okay, so um, we just finished up Ecclesiastics and what a beautiful teaching um, from King Solomon. Okay, giving us a little wisdom about reality of life and things that are vanity. Okay, so we can't waste our time. Okay, God give us precious time, so we got to use it for good. Okay, um, so let's begin um, with prayer. Okay, so we can get right into the lesson. Okay, Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, because you always are faithful to us. God, thank you for new mercies today. They are new every morning, God. We thank you for your compassion also, God. We thank you for the youth, Lord God. God, we ask you, Lord God, right now to open up their minds, God, that they may learn in simplicity, Lord God, that's, that they can learn, God, and receive, God, and, and get a good perception of who you are, God, and, and God, your true identity, God, that you are sovereign, that you are I am, and, and there's no one like you ever will be like you, God. You're the only true sovereign God. So thank you for the study today and share light, oh God, that who you really are in your essence, God. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. I always give a shout out and thank my brother Israel, the young soldier in the gospel. I always want to give you acknowledgement, brother, because I'm so proud of you in the gospel. Amen. All right, you, um, we're on study number eight, and the title is I am who speaks to you. It's a uh, familiar passage um, in the Bible that Jesus uh, was passing through some Samaria and he met the Samarian lady um, at the Jacob's well. Okay. And so um, that's what we're going to take off from there. And let's read scripture. Okay. And we're going to come out of John 14. I mean, I'm sorry, John 4, starting at verse 13. Okay. And it say, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, okay? But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall become unto him a fountain of water, springing up into eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go, call your husband, and come. Now we're going to go to verse 19. The woman said to her, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where we ought to worship. And you worship what you know not, we worship what we know, for salvation is of the Jews. Okay? Now we're going to verse 24. Jesus, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called the Christ. Uh, when he comes, he will tell us all things. The last verse, verse 26, Jesus said to her, I who speaks to you am he. Okay, our memory verse is the woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. And whenever he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Okay, that is John 4. 25 and 26. Okay, our main ideal today is the perception we have about Jesus will determine our relationship with him. Let me say that one more time. Our perception of, of Jesus, of how we perceive him, our understanding of him will determine our relationship with him. The three goals we're going to accomplish today is the first one is to know that it was Jesus, that it was God who took the initiative to reveal himself to mankind, which was through Christ, okay? God revealed himself to us through Christ, okay? And two, to reflect about how much they know Jesus in a very personal way. And three, to deepen and grow our knowledge in God and their relationship with him. Amen. Um, so we're going to be studying the book of John. And the book of John, um, first we're going to start, the book of John has a lot of, um, quotes from Jesus that start out with I am okay and it reflects us back to in the Old Testament um, where Moses asked um, God um, you know, what, what is his name you know so he can tell the um, children of Israel you know when he goes to try to de deliver them from um, the hands of Pharaoh and they can say oh, what's your God name who sent you and he said let's tell them I am that I am okay I am I am. So in other words, that's is 
I am is like self-existence. You know, um, he, he, he was, he is, he always will be. That's why you say I am, okay? And that's why Jehovah actually means also um, that is he self-existing God. He wasn't made. He wasn't created. You can't vote him in. You can't veto him. You, 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 you just have to acknowledge him as who he is, the very essence of his character, okay? So, we're gonna, the book of John is a beautiful book because John is going to explain to us uh, when Jesus is saying who he really is um, in a relationship with Jehovah, with uh, who he is, um, as you call him Messiah, if you want to call him a great prophet, but Jesus is going to reveal to us through John, through the book of John and the teaching of John, the gospel of John, that who he really is. So let's go back to our main, um, our main idea, our perception of who Jesus is, who Christ is, will determine our relationship with him, okay? Now, some some asked and said, um, Jesus asked his disciples, he said, who do men say that I am? And it seemed like it's just a rhetorical question. No, this is a very important question, okay? Since Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man coming to the Father except by me. So is it, that's a very important question because, uh, in other words, he was saying, how do men perceive me? You know, so that that question wasn't a trick question because did he know that um, they was that people wasn't coming directly to Jesus um, and to ask him these questions. So um, he, they was coming secretly to his disciples, you know, and so he knew that disciples knew what was the talk, the gossip was going on around the town in that time. So he asked the disciples, what are people saying about me? You know, what is their perception of me? Who, who do they say I am? Uh, you know, is I'm good, bad? You know, who, who am I? You know, and he said, man, some say you are John the Baptist. Some, some say you are Elijah, you know, Jeremiah, one of the other prophets. You know, so they were just throwing all these names out there, which are biblical names uh, and, 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 and uh, beautiful, powerful prophets, okay, in the kingdom of God. And but then Jesus made it personal. He said, but who do you say that I am? And then Peter um, stepped up and he said that you are Christ, son of the living God. Okay. And and Jesus said, you know, blessed. You are blessed, Peter, because um, my father had revealed this to you. And it seemed like it's something so simple. Like, wow, my father, had to God himself had to reveal this to you just to let you know that I'm Jesus. Yes, I mean, it, it, it takes the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, to let you know who Christ really is. And I'm talking about not just for a glimpse. I'm talking about to walk with him down the road. It's going it, to gonna take some convince. You got to know that Christ, Jesus is Christ, and he's Lord. He's the Son of the living God. So let's see what John says um, in his gospel, okay, that Jesus identified himself as, okay? First he says, I am, okay, the bread or life. Okay, I am the bread of life. Then he goes to say, I am the light of the world. Okay, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Okay, I am the true vine. You know, these um, claims by Jesus to indicate his divinity. Revealing his character and giving us um, extraordinary promises. Um, they will be the topic of our studies during the second cycle. So this is uh, what we're going to be focusing on in this next section. Okay. Um, I'm starting off um, with um, study number eight. And Jesus saying, I am he who speaks to you. Talking about the Samaritan woman. It was um, intentional. That, that Jesus had to pass through Samaria. It was some things that was going on. The Samaritan didn't have, and the Jews was in religious conflict. You know, um, the Jews didn't re uh, receive the Samaritans. They were looking at the Samaritan was um, like an outcast, a downgrade of themselves. Um, and and this woman was in. She was confused. You know, she had uh, she been with a lot of partners, a lot of men, and. She was coming to the you know to the well to draw water, and she didn't know that the day was going to be her day. And it was and it's beautiful because that's how Christ is, man. His mercies are new every morning. We never know 
what day is going to be our day that Christ really, really is going to just press in us and, and, and want to know. See, that's it. See, God wants us to know the truth. It is not like it's a like it's a secret. You know, God wants us to know the truth. He wants to reveal his mysteries to us. But we got to know, we got to be in, um, in position um, to receive that. So we got to be willing. We, we, our heart has to be right. We have to have a, a, a receptive heart and a 100% and a, and a perception of who Jesus really is, okay? And who he always will be. Okay, so let's start um, looking um, at our first uh, study development, which is one. And it says a human perception of Jesus, okay? Um, what kind of prejudice or uh, what kind of things um, that can hinder us from knowing who Jesus really is? It's real short for me. Uh, it can be, um, most of all, I believe it's tradition. Um, your family, you know, uh, just uh, self-ambition, you know, self-desires. But I, I think those are, the, the for me, I think those are the key. Uh, tradition, uh, you know, I can't break the tradition. Grandma did it like this. Grandma, grandma did it like this. Grandma, 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 and granddaddy, granddaddy, uh, his granddaddy did it like this. We always gonna do it like this, even though you know they wasn't right. But it, it, you don't want to disrespect them and say, no, I can't break out. I gotta do what grandma, and granddad did. Well, well, if once you know the truth, the Bible said, once you know the truth, the truth make you free okay so we need to be free with um so we have knowledge we can't walk in ignorance you know um so it let 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 the word of god um uh, tell us who is who is true okay and we know who is true i am the good the bread of life i am the light of the world okay i am the good shepherd okay i am the true vine i am the way the truth and the life no man cometh to my father except through me I am, you know, so Jesus is, is proclaiming the same thing that Jehovah proclaimed to Moses. He said, I am that I am. And Jesus is taking up those words, I am. And he's saying, so whatever you need me to be in the darkness, I am the light in this world or the world. Okay. So if, 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 you, if you're a farmer, you're saying, I am the true vine. Okay. And whatever, whatever, if you're a shepherd or sheep, or oh, whatever he said, I am the good shepherd, not a bad one. I'm the good shepherd. So whatever we need um, Christ to be for us, and I'm talking about spiritual. Let's not have your mind going out crazy in the world, saying because God is holy, we got to respect Him and fear Him as being holy. I'm talking about having a right perspective for for Christ when He wants to do something amazing in our life, which is to be with us for eternity. That's why Christ came. Our sins separated us from God, from the Father, but God didn't leave us in that in that state. So He gave His Son the the, the ministry of reconciliation uh, through the death, burial, and, re and resurrection. Okay, and so now God, through Christ, give us the same um, calling, the same ministry um, to reconcile sinners. That's what we get. We got a commission. We got to go out and save souls. We do preaching, evangelizing, um, whatever that God put in our heart. And, and, and to do to win souls for him okay he told peter yeah i know you're a fisherman but i'm going to make you a fisherman of men okay not fish you're not going to catch a cat fish you're not going to catch a bass you're not going to catch a crappy but i want you to catch. he said those things are good because you got to eat he said but your main focus i want you to catch men okay so that's our ministry go out into the world preach the gospel you know baptizing them in the name of the father son and the Holy Ghost, okay? So we got a commission, all right? So I believe family um, is uh, is another big part of why Henry Russ from um, really receiving who Christ really is and knowing him personal, you know, perception. You know, sometimes I say, well, I, I believe in Christ, but I'm just thinking that he's just a great prophet or he just, um, or he was a good religious leader or he was, no, 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 no. Those things is, 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 uh, is damaging, okay? If you don't receive, I got to be blunt and straight. If you don't receive Christ, if for who, who say he is in the Bible, that he's the son of the living God, and no man come to the Father except through him, I think that's pretty serious. I think that's enough to make you wonder, make you want to study and have a relationship with him, okay? And, yeah, I'm, family, yeah, you don't want to disrespect family, but you don't also want to disrespect God, which is most important. 
and lead yourself going to a place for eternity where you don't never want to be okay so once you know the truth let's activate that in our hearts okay i know you can do it you you guys are smart you guys be on that phone you can you can do all these gadgets and do all these things so i know that you can perceive that who christ really is so breakfast man open up that word you know if you don't want to do it through, through the bible man go download the bible app you know man eat eat that word you got to start eating spiritual so you can grow spiritual you know um i, I know a lot of guys that can pump weights and, and they're outside they're strong but inside they're weak they fly off the handle as soon as something go wrong they, they, they weak on the inside they, they don't have no 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 strength um on the inside okay but outside you see all these muscles they can push all this weight and iron but they don't they don't have no no solid foundation uh, on the inside okay the spiritual life is in ruins okay and they're all out of control okay so I, I know you can do it youth i know it okay now we're talking about worshiping so 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 god met this um samaritan woman and he was start telling her that listen if you perceive who i really am because i'm asking you for some water okay and i come to the jacob well and i know your, your perception is gonna is not gonna be spiritual right now because i'm asking you first of all you just met me okay so i'm asking you for a drink of water okay and you say you don't have nothing to draw with and then i'm gonna and jesus is gonna come back and answer and tell her that if you know the gift of god and you know who it is that's talking to you right now if you really knew then you would ask me for the water which is living water not not this water that we're going to draw with a little pot in the bucket no the living water which is the word i'm gonna give you salvation i'm gonna give you the holy spirit it's gonna i'm gonna give you this living water man it's gonna set you free oh my god it can give you power okay and and understanding and acknowledgement you're gonna show the word it's gonna change your whole life you're gonna change your whole life you're not gonna have five husbands you're not gonna have the one that you wear now is not even your husband you're not gonna have all that your life is going to be in order because God is in order. God is decent and in order. And Apostle Paul said, whatever you do, do everything decent and in order. And that's what God does. He come into our closet and he cleans up. He come into our bedroom. He cleans up. He come into our kitchen. He cleans up. That's what he does. He, he's a cleaner. He's a sanctifier. He sanctifies through his word and by the Holy Spirit and the power. Of, oh, my God. And, and, and he can do it. And so he having a conversation with her, and then the conversation actually lead her to um, the point of worship. You know how I don't know, but anyway, she still getting a little perception. Not not still, she still don't know that he's the Christ, you know, Son of the Living God. But she know now I know that hey, he he's on to something, you know. And then she, even she got to the point where she said, "Well, when the Messiah comes, okay." Uh, so in other words, she is looking for the Messiah. That that for me that was so beautiful. Even though she didn't know who Christ was right there at that moment talking to her, just like we was. You know, when we heard God dealing with our conscience when we was out in the world, you know, and God was the same conversation, so I can't judge her. I didn't come the first time we had a conversation, but I felt something, you know, I knew it was something different and, and life changing, you know, and so and so so she said when the Messiah comes he gonna put all he gonna tell us what to do okay he can tell us all things when he comes oh he when he comes he's gonna tell us all things so she was ready she was willing to listen she was willing to learn and she was looking for the messiah because she said when he comes he's gonna tell us all things so and he said i who speaks to you am him and man that changed her whole life because she took off she dropped everything she ran to the city and she testified come meet a man good god <laughs> come meet him you know, and man, that's what God does when He, when He, when He touch our lives. We can't hold it. We want to share it with somebody else. You know, my wife always, when she cooks something, it tastes good, especially for the first time she tried, and it comes out good. Man, she would grab it and run to find me where I'm at and try to stuff it down my mouth. I said, No, that's okay. She go, oh, You know, you're gonna taste this because she said I want to share it with somebody, and that's how it is, man. When you, man, when you take something good, you want to share it, okay? And I want to share Christ with you guys today. The youth, you know, whoever watching over YouTube, man, listen, man, uh, I want to share Christ with you. Uh, something I just don't want to put over, over YouTube. But let me tell you, he is who we say he is, okay? When, when Christ said, he said, I am the good shepherd. I am your friend. You know, I am the light of the world. 
because my life was in darkness. And man, believe me, now after 20 years of serving him and walking with him, he's still shedding light in my life. But what a blessing um, he is in my life. Uh, can't live without him now. No way, can't live without him. Um, so don't let the world identify, tell you who Christ is, okay? They're just gonna tell you, uh, a matter of fact, some call him um, Bezebel. Some say he, he's a devil. They, you know, so, and these religious leaders, the Pharisees and the scribes and Sadducees, all them calling, was calling him um, a devil, saying, you're a Bezebel, you have a devil, blasphemy, you know, and this was actually the Christ, son of the living God. So people are going to tell you who he is, but Christ always asked me this personal question, who do you say I am? Not what Hollywood say I am, okay? Not who your friends say I am, okay? Not who everybody that don't believe in me say I am. He said, I'm asking you this personal question. Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? That's the question you're going to ask. Because the Bible says that every every person, every everybody that comes through from the mother's womb, every living soul, okay, is going to have to give account, okay, for how they live, their actions. They can, we, got, we got to give account. And you can say, well... You had a chance to know me and you rejected me. I don't know how many times. He keep record. He knows. He knows how many times, okay? And Peter rejected him, but he gave him another chance. He told he called he said, Go get and, and Peter also. When he called the disciples, he, he he also added Peter because he know Peter had failed him. He know Peter was feeling real bad and you know, don't know why he was con I don't know why Peter was contemplating in in this in his mind or in his heart, but I know he didn't feel good. Because every time I let Christ down, I don't feel good. I got to make it right for you. I don't feel good. So whatever Peter was going through, I know he thought he wasn't worthy enough again. But Christ asked for him again. He called him personally and said, when y'all come, you bring, make sure you bring Peter along with you. Okay. So, man, what an awesome God. Okay. So don't let the world define who Christ is in your life. Okay. Know him for yourself. All right. See you soon. God bless you.